question seven. We've got five of the seven letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are arranged in a random order in a straight line. How many different arrangements <coughs> of five letters are possible? We're talking arrangements. Now, does that mean order matters or not? It matters, doesn't it? If it's arrangements, the order is the different every time. Every time it's a different order, it's a different arrangement. So, um, which, which one is it? Permutations or combinations where the order matters? Which is it, Lewis? I'm not sure. Permutations. This is the permutations one. Combinations is just choosing. And then the order that you choose something doesn't matter. The permutations is the, the number of arrangements. So we simply want to do 7P5. How many permutations of five objects selected from seven are there? And you can do that on your calculator, or you can do that, that's five, uh, seven take five on the bottom there. You can do that using the factorial notation. Either one gives you the same answer, and you get, I'll just turn this off, seven P2 gives us 42. I did 7P2, I should have done 7P5, yeah. 2520, of course it is. There we go. Um, how many of these arrangements end with a vowel, either A or E? Well, actually, let's, let's deal with those two things separately. So if they end with A, <coughs> well if they end with A, that means A is one of our five, and it happens at the end. So of the remaining six letters, we need to choose, we need to find arrangements of four of them to go before the A. And 6P4 gives us 360. And if it ends with E, it's the same scenario, isn't it? That means E is at the end, and of the remaining six, we need to arrange four of them before the E. So there are 720 of those arrangements that end in um, A or E. Does that make sense? Just thinking about the two options separately. A group of five people, so actually now we've got a similar thing going on here. We've got a group of five people chosen from a list of seven. Now as soon as we see that word chosen, this is telling us the order that we arrange them doesn't matter at all. They're just going to be selected and they can stand in a huddle. They don't have to stand in a line. How many different groups of five people can be chosen? So really the mark here is just for doing... Um, 7C5 instead of 7P5, which is 21. Okay, so the 21 possible teams of five. Part B, the list of seven people includes Jill and Joe. A group of five people is chosen at random from the list. Given that either Jill and Joe are both chosen, or neither of them is chosen, Find the probability that both of them is chosen. Now, actually, this is an interesting one because this is another given that. And given that reduces our original field of probability. So we're not considering all 21 possible selections now. We're only considering the ones where either they were both chosen or neither of them were chosen. So let's think through those scenarios. If, if both were chosen... Well, if both of them were chosen, that means we're no longer really considering five from seven. If both were chosen, two of them are in the team. And we've got to choose the remaining three from the remaining five people. So we make up the rest of our selection by doing 5C3, which is ten. If neither of them are chosen... Well, if neither of them are chosen, it's a really simple scenario, isn't it? How many ways can we select our five people from the seven if 
if neither Jill or Joe are picked? What is it, Richard? It's one. It's, it's them not being picked. Now, the important thing here is that we are given that one of these two situations happen. So there are only 11 possible things that could occur. And we want to know the probability of them both being chosen. And that is 10 <coughs> out of the 11 scenarios that we're left with. Not 10 out of the 21 that we started with. Because we've narrowed it down to just these two possibilities. Interesting that this for the second time on the, on the paper, we, we're looking at a given that thing that narrows down our original possibilities at the start. Thank you, Alex.